Good to see you again. I hope you are happy to see me and we continue on this journey again on learning about our dance forms. We think of so many aspects and so many things that happen in India today in our new modern times as we see in our society and country. Modern development and trends in Kathak, though an ancient art form, with a very clear established history, it has grown to a massive body of work making it veer towards what is contemporary and modern. The words contemporary and modern are two different terms in context of art. Any art form, design, film, fashion, music can be contemporary, which means what is relevant today. Each generation or a time cycle brings something to the table of this development in society. But modern means a whole new language. It means new structure, new grammar and a new form. So in dance, when we speak of a modern Kathak, what does it imply? Kathak has a certain grammar and structure, as with any other dance form. Thus, when we say modern Kathak, it doesn't mean we have to break the grammar or change costume. That is just innovation or making it more in tune with contemporary desires of a society at any given point of time. Many believe that Kumudani Lakya solo performance entitled Dovida was a turning point of Kathak as a dance form. She founded the Kadam School of Dance and Music in Ahmedabad in 1967 and has done more than 70 successful productions all over the world. Her choreographies include Dhabkar, Yugal, Athakim, The Peg, Okha Haran, Sama Samvadan, Suverna, Bhav Krida, Golden Chains, Kolahal, Mushti, to name a few. In an interview, Kumudni talks about her work. At Bhartikala Kendra Delhi, Shambhu Maharaj taught us how Kathak moves in space. Other dancers stood in one place and did all sorts of things looking like acrobatics. What he taught us looked like dance. When is it that you call it dance? Why is it that you call it dance? Two dancers doing the same thing will look different because of the space around the dancer which gets the energy from the dancer's movements. After leaving the Kendra, a lot of us did solo performances. I did not appreciate the way I was dancing because I was just repeating what I was taught like a photocopy, jumping and spinning. After a performance, I did not have the satisfaction which art is supposed to give you. So I changed the whole system of teaching at Kadam. It became a passion for me to give a scientific meaning to the Kathak movements. Maharaj used to give us different meanings like that is Krishna's peacock feather, the Guru is blessing you, Krishna and Radha are being united and so on. Instead of showing typical bird flying movements or becoming the bird myself, I would become the spectator watching the birds fly in the sky. All my first compositions were abstract. We were always doing stories from Indian mythology on Radha, Krishna, Shiva, Rama, Sita. We could not get away from it. I thought we are imposing our mythology on the dance form. Can't the dance stand on its own? Is it not an art form which has its own feet? So no mythology. Let dance be dance. So I did all abstract things. My first production was Dhapkar, Pulse. Then Kolahal, noise. I've done Adha Kim. Now where do I go from here? Three times. My students like Daksha, Sait, Aditi Mangaldas felt encouraged to experiment after the East-West encounter, 1984 and 2001. With extensive training under the leading gurus of Kathak, Kumudani Lakhya and Pandit Birju Maharaj, Aditi Mangaldas is today recognized for her artistry, technique, eloquence, and characteristic energy that mark every performance. Like her gurus, she has attempted to break new ground by using her knowledge and experience of Kathak 
as a springboard to evolve a contemporary dance vocabulary infused with the spirit of the classical. As I remember, Aditi was never satisfied with just the technique or the kinetics of dance. She wanted to explore the space around her, the energy as a driving force, the innumerable patterns forming kaleidoscopic extensions, the colors, moods and just about everything. Her concerns were of larger images outside her own little frail being, says Aditi's guru Kumudani Lakhya. The purists, Aditi says, refuse to see her work as Kathak. And the modernists say that she is too traditional. She calls it contemporary Kathak and continues experimenting, unfazed by either the brickbats or the bokehs which come her way. I wanted to grow out of Kathak and extend beyond it. But I have learned Kathak for so many years that I want the base, the feel, the spirit, the vitality of it to remain. I wanted to stay recognizable as Kathak. I think it always will be. Making it modern is difficult without breaking it. Thus, when the form and content is same, what is modern? That is why an established dancer like Aditi Mangaldas did not accept the Sangeet Natak Academy Award in 2013 when given for modern work because she said her work was in Kathak. She took a principal stand and Sangeet Natak Academy had to bow and accept her stand and then give her the award next year. So modern dance can be modern but not Kathak. Kathak can look new with lights and stage and costumes and aesthetics but still not be called modern. However, modern developments are many. Costume first, gone is the fancy and frill, all props like cap, even that was very popular in 50s and 60s. See photos of old Kathak stars, Sitara Devi ji or Birju Maharaj ji and one sees the Mughal cap. This was important as not covering one's head in presence of nobleman or ruler was sign of disrespect in North, Central and West India, especially where Kathak was performed in the court. The scap went first when Mughal court influence waned and slow revival of Hindu traditions began. You don't see many Kathak dancers wearing a cap today. It is interesting that while Sitara Devi wore cap, her father created Shiva Tandava and other Durga invoking dances in Kathak as he felt that Kathak had become Darbari dance. Next went the veil, the ghungat, then heavily layered skirt. All this was in mid 80s when new design and aesthetics desired to make it simpler. From where else but the textile capital of West India, Ahmedabad where Kumudni Lakhya, trained under renowned masters, undertook to reform and redesign Kathak costume aesthetics. So pastel and earth tonality colors replace loud pink and purple of yore. She used different shades of color in her costumes that she designed herself and composed the choreography so colors don't clash and come together in a way that they themselves create a design. Excessive chunnis also were done away with as new gender equality and feminist concerns made costumes for women neutral and less feminine. Form was important, not content. Music also was simplified. Sarangi was replaced by violin and sitar with flute. It was easy to carry these instruments and if one wished to carry none, then recorded music came to the rescue. Although in Kathak, lot of talking on stage happens as tradition and time filler, breathe, breath catching technique after rigorous periods and flexing of footwork, so recorded music limits. Kumudani Lakya has worked with Rupat, jazz, African drums, experimented with a lot of music. With my long time collaborator Latul Desai, we used to have lots of discussions, his music danced by the time we made the production. With Dhrupad, they are not going to change. They will keep it in a traditional way, slow in the beginning, along a lap. So I had to create a lot of new movement patterns. Pandit Chitresh Das, 1944 to 2015, disciple of Pandit Ram Narayan Mishra, settled in San Francisco area and has collaborated with the composer George Rukat, incorporating Western violin, banjo and synthesizers. He even incorporated the high kicks of the French can-can dance and a Mexican Marachi waltz. 
He created innovative choreographies ahead of his time, such as Gold Rush, Energy, Class Tech, and Rhythmics. Dancers wore black body suits, short silver kurtas, and he even wore a tank top in one of his choreographies. Some of the music he composed used synthesizers and an electric flute. He is famous for his intense high energy dancing and Kathak yoga that focuses on the union of breath, voice, dance, footwork and supple expression and sometimes playing an instrument simultaneously. This requires super stamina. It was the subject of a doctoral dissertation at Harvard University. While dance dramas were always part of Kathak representation, group work wasn't. Earlier, a guru would present a student of professional stage only when she was totally ready, not just an item ready. This meant a student acquired good and solid foundation and not just half-baked one. Thus, on an average, it took 7 to 10 years of minimum training to acquire foundation on which an edifice could be built. Thus, once ready for stage, in presence of peers and important personages, a guru would delightfully present his or her award. Today, the scenario is to learn on Skype. Foundation in mass class is not easily attainable unless a student works harder than the guru. Thus, we do not see many soloists emerging but only group dancers. Group dances has its minuses and pluses. It affords an opportunity for all levels of dancers to perform. It also covers up for weak ones and gives chance to real good ones to stand out as comparison is immediate and easy. Although comparison belongs to the mind of the audience, still on stage every aspect of dance costume, expression, wrong movement gets highlighted. Excellent group performances are seen in the works of Kadamb, Kumudani Lakhya, Kathak Kendra, Kala Ashram, Pandit Bildu Maharaj, Chitresh Das Dance Company, Abhinav Dance Company, Nadam Dance Company, Drishtikon Dance Company, Natya STEM Dance Company, Anarth School of Dance, etc. Among new trends is to seek new themes. In 1950s, pure technique and some song was enough as material was vast and training arduous. In 1960s, mythology and scriptures dominated the takes from Puranas and Upanishads. In 1970s, theme-specific ballet, dance drama productions on one poet, say Kalidas or Tulsi Das or Ras Khan took precedence in addition to classical stories, Malti Madhav or Kumar Sambhava. In the 1980s, focus was on group work and razzle-dazzle tatkars and todes plus partaking of some local regional poet or theme. In 1990s, we saw growing interest in themes concerning nature environment, gender and the like. The 21st century is upon us and we see feminism, gender roles and other such global concerns taking over. Shobhana Narayan has produced international collaborative works with leading dancers of Western classical ballet, Spanish flamenco, tap dance, Buddhist chants with Buddhist monks as well as the compositions of Western classical composers. She has worked on philosophical themes on the lives of contemporary sages such as Vivekananda, Ramana Maharishi, Ramakrishna Paramahansa and Mahatma Gandhi. She has incorporated modern themes such as child abuse and human rights in her performances. Her concern for environment ended in the Shantar way back in 1982 when such themes were not yet common. In the 90s, Shovna presented a traumatic burning issue of incest at a traditional Kathak dance festival, though Tuta Ye Vishwas Kyun, that focused on the psychology of the victim and the mother. Shobha Koser is aghast when dancers take up themes like incest in Kathak. She feels let us leave sub suggest to cinema. After all, our classical dance forms are about communion with the Almighty. Another trend is to inter internationalize it with flamenco and tap dance. This has been attempted by many in past like seniors, Pratap Pawar in Trinidad and London, later with Janki Patrick in New York, Pandit Chitresh in California, whose collaboration with tap star Jason Samuel Smith, India Jazz Studies became an international sensation and was named one of the top 10 productions of 2010 by the Boston Globe. Even in India, Shovna Narayan has undertaken this and others meaningfully. 
Arjun Mishra along with choreographer Anurekha Ghosh from the UK and Dasha Evanova, a Russian contemporary and hip-hop dancer, have performed together in a mix of jazz, hip-hop and contemporary dance with Kathak. Asavri Majumdar has used visual projection and mask in her work on Surpanakha. In Kathak Through the Ages, the last choreography of Maya Rao in 2014, video projection in the background adds to the dynamism of the choreography. Daksha Sheth studied with Guru Kumidni Lakya for 18 years before leaving her native Gujarat for Delhi in 1982. She soon decided to experiment outside the dance form's boundaries and drew from her experience of Kathak from North India, Chow from East India, Kalari Payatu from South India and Malakham from West India to combine tradition with contemporary Indian dance. Daksha's use of hand beat over the body was inspired by Kathak. Each production has radical changes in the context of music, costumes, staging, themes, music, lighting, design. Daksha states choreography along with the composer husband Devis Ro, conceptualization and visual direction has resulted in some visually spectacular productions. In the last 25 years, Nadroop, headed by Shama Bhatte in Pune, has presented several collaborations like Nada Bindu, with dance choreographed by Sayyid Haider Raza's paintings to Nishad Bhed to dance based on French documentary Exploring Silence on Marine Lives and Lack of Sound. Confluence is based on the life of Kasturba Gandhi. The new format sees jazz music provided by an Austrian band, Manfred Weinberger, and the music is based on Pir Parai Janari. The band plays the trumpet and it is incorporated in the performance, says Shama Bhatte, who feels that experimentation is imperative for art forms. Another important development and trend is to combine Kathak with Bharatanatyam production, where all other forms are included like Mohiniyatam, Kujapudi, Bharatanatyam, Odissi. Generally, each does separate sections, sometimes two or three forms are seen together and all come together for a finale. Here are a few such examples. In February 2015, conceptualized and choreographed by Shama Bhatte, Nadroop concluded Silver Jubilee celebration with the Teeth Ki Parchhaiya, Ma Bharat Ke Punar Khoj, unfolding the many layers of Ma Bharat through a blend of seven Indian classical dance styles featuring such names like Ramli Ibrahim for Odissi, Vajanti Kashi for Kuchipuri, Vaibha Varekar for Bharatanatyam, Gopika Varma for Mohini Atam, Rakesh Sai Babu for Chau, Dr. Kannan for Kathakali, and Amira Patankar in Kathak. In Jai Bharati, one saw Geeta Chandran, Bharatanatyam, Singhajit Singh and Charuj Sija Mathur, Manipuri, Bharati Shivaji, Mohini Atam, Jai Rama Rao and Vanashri Rao, Kuchipuri, Madhvi Mudgal, Odissi, and Shovna Narayan, Kathak. In Sankriti, Geeta's Bharatanatyam choreography, dialogue with Odissi, Kathakali, Manipuri and Kathak. Throughout his career, Pandit Chitresh Das collaborated with numerous artists of other genres, including tap, jazz, flamenco, balinese, gamelan, Kathakali, Bharatanatyam and many more. He created productions that did not fuse the different art forms, but highlighted each form in its purity where finding a common ground. Music also is now multi-sourced and no more limited to rhythm intensive one. Nandu Bhide in Pune is one such example where piano is used for Kathak. Only claps and counting have been attempted making Kathak silent or sounds music. All this points to a need in artists to try something new and cater to ever-growing desires of sponsors and patrons. Kathak has diminished from traditional cities like Lucknow, Ambala, Jaipur and gone to new cities like Chennai and Trivandrum. It has left its Hindi specific moorings and many dialects within Hindi and now partakes freely of other languages including Marathi and Gujarati, Tamil and Malayalam. Prerna Shimali, a disciple of Kundalal Gangani, is concerned about what ails the Kathak dance form. She feels a lot of differences have crept in over the years. Kathak has become more of a performing art than anything else and the proscenium changes a lot. At the performing level, it is difficult to tell the difference between the gharanas of Jaipur, Lucknow and Banaras unless you are aware of the subtle changes, technical differences such as the bowl, rhythmic syllables used in each. Elements like the costumes, makeup and lighting and even in some cases the manner of speaking are the same in almost all presentations. The exceptions are legends like Sunaina Hazarilal who has maintained the distinctiveness in costuming, Elvis's presentation and Sitara Devi who is a unique artist. Rajshri Shirke heads the last year Centre of Dance Education and Research which 
conducts a diploma in Kathak and Bharatanatyam in Mumbai and has deeply involved in reviving the Kathaka tradition within the traditional format of Kathak, thus innovating by going back to the roots of the style. She has been groomed in Kathak by Madhurita Sarang from Lucknow, Jaipur Banaras Gharana and Pandit Birju Maharaj. Her storytelling combining Kathak is very popular and some of her productions include Sant Kanho Patra, Hidimba, Ravana Mandodri, Samvad, etc. For quite some time, I felt the Bhav Paksha of Kathak in the present day performances was not as widely explored as Nritya Paksha. That's when I was drawn towards the Kathaka Parampara, the art of storytelling of Kathak. Kathak was known as Kathaka Kare So Kathak. The genesis of the style of Kathak is in fact traced back to this format presentation which was prevalent in the temples, says Sharke. We also have Kathak dancers like Manjari Trivedi, a disciple of Arjun Mishra, who has done research in spiritual music forms. She performs what is called Sufi Kathak, which she uses for mystical traditions, with classical Kathak to communicate the notion of spiritual thought. Rani Khanam of Delhi founded the Sufiana Dance Ensemble in 1989 and performs Sufiana Kathak to Islamic verses, great Sufi masters' compositions, Kavalis, Indo Persian compositions, and Sufi folk compositions. Sunaina is one of the several Mujra dancers who have reinvented the profession made famous by Lucknow Nawabs and now lives in New Delhi, but visits Lucknow for special events. She says, a lot of parties these days want Mujra dancers. The only difference is that modern Mujra dancers perform at weddings, bachelor parties, birthday bashes, engagements and theme parties for a fairly hefty price. We perform on famous Bollywood item songs in Umbrao Jan Rekha style. So if one views this canvas, Kathak has grown and dressed all decades of India's own journey from a colony under British India, notch, to modernity in thought and content. Thus, while the form may not have been modern, thought and approach have in keeping with the time and society and developments. We see Kathak come out of temple to courts, to proscenium stage, to films, to stadium. Today, Kathak is synonymous with all ages and stages. It is integral to all society, almost pan-Indian. Thank <laughs> you.